Hi everyone, it's Stephanie Realmine, Spark People's Editorial Director. Welcome to Take 5 with Spark People. This is our very first Google Hangout. If you were watching just a couple of minutes ago, we experienced some brief technical difficulties. It's Murphy's Law, isn't it? That um, when you get really excited to start something like this, um, it's the one time that technology doesn't cooperate with you. So thanks for bearing with us and welcome. So Take 5 with Spark People is going to be a short 5 to 10 minute Google Hangout on Select Fridays. Um, we're putting it at the lunchtime hour so that most of you can, can tune in either at your desk. And if that's not a convenient time for you, all of these will be saved to YouTube so that you can reference them and watch at your convenience. Um, we're also going to be sharing blogs on sparkpeople.com. So if you're interested in this content in text form, you can tune in there. So today's topic is learning to become a morning person. And I am an expert at getting up early in the morning, much to my husband's um, chagrin. I was not always a morning person in college and for a few years after I worked in newspapers and I was a copy editor. So I worked 4 p.m. to midnight, got off at midnight, went home, ate dinner, stayed up until 2, 3, sometimes 4 in the morning, and usually slept until noon. And it was probably no surprise that I, that's when I gained my weight. I gained 40, 50 pounds, um, was pretty much unhealthy, unhappy, and eventually I learned, mostly due to necessity, to love mornings. Um, once I started working at Spark People, I worked mornings, I worked a normal shift, usually 8 to 5, 9 to 6, that sort of a schedule. And then a couple of years ago, my yoga studio switched from evening classes to primarily morning classes. So instead of the typical wake up, get ready, go to work schedule, I started waking up, getting ready, going to yoga for an hour and a half, and then going to, to work. So it required that I really up my game in terms of becoming a morning person, liking mornings, and just being prepared. So today I'm going to share with you five tips, thus take five. Um, my first tip is to plan ahead. So when you get home every night, unpack your gym bag or your work bag, uh, your lunch bag, whatever you took with you to the office or to the gym that day, unpack it. Put all the dirty dishes away, all the dirty clothes away, and then immediately repack. So as soon as I take the dirty clothes out of the gym bag, I put clean clothes back in. And anything that I ran out of, like if I ran out of hair cream or something like that, if I need deodorant or something, I make sure that that goes into the bag. And then I put it in the exact same place every day so that when I leave, I don't forget it or I don't um, run around trying to figure out, did I leave it in the laundry room? Did I leave it in the bedroom closet? Where, where is it? Um, obviously with lunch, you'll want to make sure that you refrigerate it until the morning, but you want to stick to the same schedule. Um, so if you grab your lunch last thing every day before you leave, you're far less likely to forget it. If you stick with the same steps day after day in the exact same order, you're far less likely to forget to do something. You're also less likely to run out of time. So how many times have you turned on your phone, checked email, turned on the television to check the weather, and then suddenly 30 minutes have passed and you're late for work, you're late for the gym, you've missed your morning yoga session. So same steps, same order. Every morning I get up, I go to the bathroom, I feed the cats, I drink lemon water, turn on the tea kettle, get dressed, so on and so forth. If I deviate from my plan at all, I'm far more likely to forget something. So get a plan, plan ahead, and then stick with that plan. Uh, my final tip related to preparedness is to pack extras. We've all had those days where you forget to pack socks for the gym or you forget to pack clean underwear or something like that. And those days are awful. So anything that's really, really important to you, be it extra socks, underwear, bras, a towel for the gym, um, pack an extra. And with regards to toiletries, it's good to spend a little bit of money and have a second set in your gym bag or in your, your work bag so that you have them. So you're not spending the whole day sniffing your armpits because you forgot your deodorant. <laughs> So uh, that brings me to my next tip, which is don't be vain. So uh, I learned to really streamline my beauty process and my 
uh, clothing process when I started working out in the mornings, and I urge you to do the same. So maybe you can't wear your fanciest outfits because they'll wrinkle if they're all rolled up in your gym bag, but um, in the end, if it comes down to getting in a workout or wearing that awesome new dress, um, you really just kind of have to prioritize. And all you ladies out there, is there a way that you can maybe streamline your makeup routine, cut out a few extra steps? One of my coworkers and friends, Trina, just had um, a sweet little baby boy this year, and she said she's become the master of the five-minute face. So she's eliminated any extraneous steps in her makeup process, and she's ready to go out the door in five minutes. So consider something like that. Um, I'm kind of blessed with curly hair. I don't really have to do anything with it. Um, but can you maybe forego the straightening iron? Could you only blow dry it halfway to save time so that you can get in a workout? And my next tip is probably not going to make me very popular. Stick with your early morning schedule, even on the weekends. So if you get up at 6 o'clock during the week, I really wouldn't sleep in past 7 on the weekends, maybe 7.30. Give yourself an hour, maybe an hour and a half extra, but you're really going to struggle to get up on Monday morning if you've spent the weekend sleeping until 10, staying up until 1 in the morning. I speak from experience here. And even though it's no fun to be the person who goes home at 10 o'clock and can't stay out late, I feel awesome in the morning and my Monday morning self thanks me for having stuck to my schedule. And then my final tip is to cut yourself some slack. So I am by no means perfect. And I have days and even weeks where I can't get out of bed even though I really want to get up and do my practice or go to the gym. So whether you're sick or you're tired or whatever, if you just need a break, Cut yourself some slack and give yourself a day off. Or I had the flu a few weeks ago. I gave myself a whole week off, and I was sleeping in until 8.30. And I needed to do that to, to help my health so that I could get back to my healthy habits. And the next week, it was a little harder than usual, but now I'm back to normal. So thanks so much for listening to me today. Um, we are going to be taking requests for more topics. So if you have a really pressing question that you want us to answer, go ahead and post it on our Google Plus page, and I'll answer it in a future installment of Take 5 with Spark People. I'm Stephanie Romine, Spark People's Editorial Director, and I thank you for taking 5 with us today on Friday. Oh, and coming up next on our Take 5 will be boosting your workout motivation instantly. So we'll share five ways that in 30 seconds or less you can feel far more motivated to get to the gym and get moving. And if you have any questions related to that, again, check it out. Um, check out our Google Plus page, ask questions, and we'll be happy to answer them. So have a great day. TGIF everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.